So previously on the channel, we bought this 1993 Dodge Cummins turbo diesel engine, the famous 12 valve, but this thing was in really bad shape. It turned over really slow and it had good compression all the way up until cylinder number six. Zero. Let's just hail Mary it. Woo! <laughs> I think it's time to put her away, boys. Well, here she is. The troubled motor from last episode. We're going to see what's going on inside this thing. So let's get the tractor out here, hook it up, and get her over in the shade where we can work on it. adapter plate bolts to the engine and and this adapter plate also bolts to the transmission but I don't trust this to bolt to that uh, by itself so I'm gonna take this plate off and bolt the, the block directly to the stand I couldn't see. Too many leaves and fry oil in the way.
So, this is a genuine 5.9 Cummins turbine diesel out of a 1993 Dodge Cummins. And if you will look at our last video, uh, you'll see that we did a will it run on this. Uh, this truck hadn't ran in um, 15 to 18 years, hadn't ran in a long time. You can just tell by all the, the debris and stuff on it, it hadn't ran in a long time. Uh, and when we cranked it over, it was cranking over real slow, it sounded real funny. And we did a compression check and we, you know, lo and behold, number six cylinder had absolutely zero compression, like zero. But we still ran it anyway for you guys, just because, you know, we got to give you the content and we just have to keep pushing forward. And, you know, uh, it will run on five cylinders. I mean, we knew that. It'll run on five out of the six and she did. The video did kind of well. It's upwards of 40,000 views now. So I think that's enough. Uh, to tell me to do a part two. So here we go. We got the engine on the jack stand and I had to buy this jack stand for this video. So I, I hope you like and I hope you subscribe and I hope you give a comment because I had to make a major life investment in this video. All right, I did this just for this. Oh yeah, and also before I tear it down. So this was the complete drivetrain. It had the motor and the tranny and all that. And I didn't film it or anything because it's, it's not very exciting, but uh, I did take the transmission that was in this truck and put it in my first gen, my 1990, because 1989 and 1990, they used the 727 uh, torque flight, which was a three speed, so no overdrive. And even with 307 gears, I could only do like 60, 65 on the highway. I mean, it was just, it was, I love the truck. I love the originality of the truck, but 60, 65, when you're driving long distances, it makes a big, big difference. Uh, it's not very fast. And this truck, 91 and a half, technically 91 and a half, two and three, they use the A518, which has an overdrive on it. So in the back here, I don't think you could see it. I have the 727 sitting on the floor. I swapped it out for the A518. So now my 90 Cummins has the overdrive. So what we want to do in this video is uh, tear into this motor. We're going to bust the head off and we're going to see what happened to cylinder six. Uh, what happened at the time of departure? Why is it not joining the party? Why is it decided that it wants to go its own way and live its own dreams and not do what I want it to do? I think there's a hole in the piston. What do you think? Leave it down in the comments before you go and see what happens or whatever. Do you think the block is cracked on the inside, the cylinder walls? Do you think there's a hole in the piston? Do you think the piston is just not even there? Is it just completely missing and gone? I don't know. Maybe someone played a sick joke and took the piston out and put the engine back together. But <clears throat> when we drained the oil, we didn't see any metal shavings or chunks or anything in the pan. So we know the piston is in there somewhere. It's in the engine. I think there's a hole in it. I think they burned through it running that fry oil doing stupid stuff they shouldn't have been doing. And also the engine only had one speed. So when I operated the throttle, uh, the, the RPMs did not change at all. I mean, it's like the, the injection pump just did not register at all. It only had one speed, one RPM speed. So I don't know, something's going on with the injection pump too. Oh yeah, and as a side note, before we get to it, I've never taken one of these engines apart. Uh, I've taken apart plenty of gas engines and stuff, but I've never actually taken apart one of these, so we're going to be doing it for the first time together. This is exciting for me. I've never taken one of these engines apart, and I've always wanted to do it. And so this is my excuse.
got all the injector lines unhooked and I have these brackets on them. I tried to keep them on the on them so that I didn't lose my place, you know, so I'd have them like this. Beautiful. All in one piece. Right now I'm just trying to identify anything that is hooked to the head before I try and actually take this thing off. If it's not hooked to the block and the head, I'm just going to leave it together. This goes from this to the injection pump, so this will have to get be unhooked. What is it, like a 16? I, I still had trouble getting some of this filth off there. It was so caked on. You know, I, brought a, I bought a pretty powerful uh, pressure washer. It's like 2.7 gallons per minute or 3 gallons per minute. It's, it does a pretty good job, but I still couldn't get some of this off. It's just so, so caked on there, but oh well. school three-quarter ton puller here hooked up to the purlin. I got a chain down there that we can hook through these conveniently placed mounts. Let's see if the electric impact can do all 26 without needing a charge. Might have to get old faithful out, you know, the old air gun. Ooh, boy. She ain't gonna do that one. I'm already hitting a few that this won't do. I don't wanna mess up my gun. So let's just get the air out. I have to get the breaker bar out, I guess. Dang. Be able to finish them off now. There we go. coming off this like way. A pry bar. For some reason it's sticking in the back. It's coming off.
Hold on, it's cleared. Can we pull it out? Yeah, I'm just, you should be able to pull that motor forward. So here's cylinder one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. So as you can see here, we're taking a good gander and I don't see any holes. But if you get a screwdriver on it, let me see if I can show you. See how it's moving in that bore? Look at this, look at the side. See how we're not getting any movement? Something happened down in there, either the, the piston rings got washed out or they're seized up or something happened to where, you know, sometimes piston rings, they get seized up and then they won't have any compression, but we have zero compression on this cylinder. So um, something happened to the rings or down even, even further down. So there's number five cylinder and then there's number six. You can see all that crud and grind buildup on those valves. So it's been running like that for a, a little bit before it gave out. Cause these ones look more burned and like there was actually combustion happening. <sighs> So now I guess what we'll do is we're gonna drain the oil out, uh, take off all 675 oil pan bolts and take this oil pan off and push that piston out and see what we got. down to our last few bolts. Come on. Once it starts going, the whole thing will go. Gosh, the inside looks just as bad as the outside. <sighs> the oil pickup tube, which is almost plugged completely shut um, with sludge. <sighs> That's a major problem. And then coming up to the block, you can see that it looks just as terrible. See this dripping down? That's not oil, that's like vegetable oil sludge. See when I try and pick it off, it's, it like stretches. She was abused big time. Get number six piston out. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's up with it and see if we can put some new rings in that thing and let her rip. <sighs> Boy, let's get another bite on it. <sighs> oh, there we go. The, the general rule of thumb is like on a gas motor, whenever you can start seeing the copper on the uh, the bearing, that means that it needs to be replaced, which means the motor needs to be rebuilt. And I can see the copper on this. 
I'll show you. So here's the rod cap, and see how you can, it's dark and you can see the copper, all that copper color. That means that it's got a lot of miles on it and that these need to be replaced, these pop out. And so, all right, let's keep going ahead. I'm gonna rotate the engine, push that piston up, and then I'll uh, tap it out. I see what's going on. Flywheel bolt is hitting the mount for the motor, so I'm gonna have to take these. Uh, I'm gonna have to take these flywheel bolts out so that these bolts will clear the motor mount. All right, turning nice and smooth, baby. I think we gotta turn that crank a little more. I can't tell what's going on up there. <sighs> yeah, this piston is completely destroyed. And you see how this ring pops out? This goes against the side of the cylinder wall, obviously, and, and that's what gives you your compression. Nothing can escape here. But if you look at the other side, it's stuck inside the ridge of the piston. It's two rings, actually. Both of these rings are stuck inside the ridge of the piston. And also, we have other problems, like this oil ring here. Uh, see how it's... See that? You're not supposed to be able to see that. This, this oil ring got destroyed sometime uh, see, I can just pick a piece right out of it so yeah this piston <clears throat> something happened but I'm surprised there's no hole in the piston see those X's right there that's cross hatching but you can see a lot of it's wore out All right, so here's cylinder six here's cylinder four and if we look inside cylinder four and I run my finger and I run my finger across it, it's smooth as glass, right? But if you look at this one, you can see these lines all around here. If I run my finger, see how it's catching everywhere? It's catching on those, those are actually ridges. The cylinder is scored up really bad from that piston. You can see it all around. So you couldn't slam a piston in here and go. Looking at the Evo Dance, the rod cap is down to copper. There's a pound of sludge on everything in this motor, and this cylinder right here has to be bored out. You have to strip this thing down to nothing. You'd have to push all the pistons out. You'd have to take all the accessories off. This engine would have to be, you know, dipped and cleaned and bored and trued up. And now you're going to have to do the head. You got to have it magnaflux and make sure that's, uh, make sure the surface of the head is nice and true. So this engine, let me explain, is rebuildable. So it's not completely toast. It would just need to be gone through and rebuilt and put back together, which is something that's doable. That's just something that we're not we're not going to be doing right now. We don't have the time. And plus, um, we don't have the whole drivetrain because like I said, the transmission is in my truck now, which I'm going to get to in a moment. So I'm going to put this engine back together, set it back in the back of the donor truck for what's the next part of this video. And I want to fix the overdrive. Well, my truck came with a 727, which is a three speed. And these trucks came with an overdrive. That was the whole reason for the switch but I have the overdrive hooked up to a toggle switch. So the first three gears are hydraulically controlled. There's no electronics, but fourth gear is controlled by an electric switch. I have it hooked up to a, like a makeshift thing, a toggle switch that's not permanent. I'm gonna fix that to make it, who's honking? The computer in the 91, two and three operated the overdrive. So the computer knew the speed it would be going at to operate that. 
and because this truck didn't have fourth gear there's no computer components on it to tell it to switch into overdrive so I have to make my own computer essentially I have to trick it into thinking hey we're at the speed we're at let's switch into overdrive so how am I going to do that a hydraulic electric switch well that's the next step of this video So we have a few different things going on here for the transmission for my 90 Dodge. So this is actually a boost cable line that I got from O'Reilly's and I put it together. It's got some compression fittings and this will actually screw into the thread on the governor hole in the transmission. And then this right here screws into this and this is a gauge. So we're gonna monitor the pressure with the gauge before we go ahead and put our switch in. And I'll explain that in a sec. So it says online you get about one PSI per mile per hour. So in theory, if I want it to go into overdrive at 50 miles an hour, uh, if I'm going 50, this gauge should be reading about 50 PSI. Um, but sometimes I've heard that that's not always the case. So I wanna know when I want it, what is the pressure when I wanna switch into overdrive? That's what I'm trying to get at. This is a variable pressure switch. So this will screw into the transmission. This will screw into the fitting. Uh, I got these fittings from Auto uh, Ace Hardware and then the brake line from O'Reilly's. So this will screw into the transmission. This will screw in. We'll have to bend this to sort of come down where I want it. And then fitting screws in and then the uh, switch screws on to the fitting. You can take this cap off and there's an Allen head in there and you can adjust it up or down to change the pressure that it engages. I think it's a 50 psi, 25 to 50 psi uh, gauge. So. Alright, so here we go. So here's the uh, the line, the boost line, is screwed into the governor port right there. We got it going over. Sorry, it's really, really bright. And I'll show you over here, I got it hooked up. Besides the paint, she's basically perfect. Anyway, got the gauge in here. Uh, it's probably going to be this one we're going to be looking at. And we're doing about 20 miles an hour. Let's keep it at 20 and see what the gauge is saying. About 15. Wow, the internet might not have been lying. It's pretty cool. All right. Going 30 or we're going up in speed see our pressures going up. I'm maintaining a speed of 45 and our gauge is at 60. But the pressure is a hair bit higher than what we're actually going. 45 really means 60. Alright, so I got a few tricks up my sleeve here for this. Here's the pressure switch. We're going to see when it closes. There's an Allen head screw in here to set the pressure that the switch closes at, but I there's no way to know, like, if you turn it all the way up or down, I don't know when it's closing, what pressure it is it's closing at. There's no way to know that. I have a pressure regulator on this right here. Air gun right here that we'll put on the end of that. Set this, see how it's like a lot. You can turn it down to... 40. I back the switch all the way out so it's like zero psi it's reading so if I turn the switch in see how we see we're reading nothing now so that means the pressure switch um, is open and we got to add pressure to it so let's turn the switch in some that's 20 and we're not getting anything 25 and we're still not getting anything See how we're reading? We're reading at about 45 there. A little more higher. Yeah, 65 we're reading. Okay, so we'll back it off just a hair. Just like that. And we'll put it in the truck. 
we'll see where that gets us. I got this brake line kind of bent how I wanted and I was in the middle of trying to sort of install it. Uh, but look at this. Look at this little dude. I just caught him on my front porch. He was just hanging out and I went to go pick him up and he didn't do anything. He didn't fly away or, or nothing. What's up, buddy? I mean, he doesn't seem like he's hurt or bleed. I don't know what this is, but I don't know. I set some water out for him and we'll see what he does. He pooed it a little bit, but <laughs> I mean, whatever. I don't really care. I mean, the paint on this fender is jacked up anyway. You can hang out, buddy. You can hang out. I'm just doing, I mean, I'm just making YouTube videos. If he sticks around, he can become the shop bird. But anyway, we'll let him hang out. He's not harming nobody. Okay, so it's all plumbed in. I got the switch hooked up to the brake line. Brake line hooked up to the governor port on the transmission. Now the interesting part is going to be wiring it. So I have the original OD and cargo button switch from the donor truck because my truck obviously only has the cargo light switch, which operates the back light right on the back of the cab here. Because if I didn't wire this switch up, basically if I, I could wire it up right now, but overdrive would always be working. I could never shut it off, meaning whenever the pressure gets to 60, it's always going to go into overdrive, which is what we want. But sometimes if you're towing, if I'm hauling, I might not want it to go into overdrive and you don't want to pull loads in overdrive. So you got to have a way to shut the overdrive off if you don't want overdrive. And the black with green is the OD light. So here we go. When the light is on, the overdrive should not be working, which is counterintuitive to me. In my head, if the light's on, green means go, light means work. But on these trucks, the light means the overdrive is not engaged, meaning you'll only get three gears. But when I push the switch, the light doesn't go out, meaning that it's always, ooh, oopsie daisies. Anyway, the light should go out when you press that button. It should be engaging and disengaging, engaging, disengaging but uh, the light is always on. So I'm not sure if this switch is working or not. I wired up the switch. That white wire is wired to power on with key on in the truck. Uh, I tried to run it as clean as I could and I ran it down beneath there. Let's see. So here's our computer. There's the pressure switch. There is the wire hook to the normally open side and then the common side goes over to ground side here and this wire goes to the actual overdrive switch which is right there and then the ground to the frame so right now this should have power this should not yeah so that is that's working so power with key on and then this should get power once we're going like 60 or whatever so let's go take her for a test drive all right we're on the frontage road i don't think i felt it kick yet yeah maybe it kicked in really early so we're definitely in overdrive maybe the air pressure and the fluid pressure is a little different i don't know i've got out now and adjusted it probably three times it was shifting in at like 25 30 miles an hour as soon as it would hit third it would go to overdrive and i didn't want that so i turned it up a few turns and then i was going 55 and it wasn't even kicking into overdrive so I've tweaked it out a little bit and I'm trying to get to that sweet spot. I have to back that switch out. We're starting on a standstill here. Just hit second. Just hit third. There we go, there's overdrive. That's about right, I like that. About 44, 45, it hits overdrive. That feels about right. Oh yeah, all automatic. No more toggle switch, man, that's cool. My own little personal computer. Man, I could sell that to Microsoft. They do something with software, don't they? So I got the overdrive working at about the speed I want it to be shifting at. And something to be said about the three to four speed conversion is the 727 and the A518's bell housing matches up perfectly fine. The, the bolt pattern on the bell housing. The torque converters are the exact same. That bolts up. You can use the same uh, shifting linkage that bolts under. That's all the same. The speedometer plug-in, I think, is a little different. You have to have the cross member from the A518. You can't use the cross member from the three-speed. And the drive shafts are different. On the 727 is a U-joint style on the tail shaft, whereas the 518 is a slip yoke style. And also, I had to have the drive shaft shortened, which that's the only real, I guess, modification I had to do. I had a new carrier bearing put on. I mean, you could use your drive shaft from the three-speed, but you'd have to have this. You'd have to have a slip yoke. Uh, welded on instead and you'd still have to have it shortened so 
Also, we have our P.O. box open. Dad and me have a P.O. box. I'll put the information right here. It's also in the description of the video. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you see future videos. Drop a comment, leave some feedback. Always responding to those. Appreciate that. And uh, just very thankful and grateful for everybody that, that watches our videos continually. Thank you, guys. We work hard to make these videos, edit them, uh, film them. Hoping to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. That's a cool goal. Always like to have goals. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one.